I haven't noticed any great groundswell of affection uh, for Washington, and that's good. It's Kennedy for Reason TV, sitting with Andrew Ferguson in his beautiful McMansion here in Virginia. Andrew is a longtime writer for the Weekly Standard. He's also the author of two books, Crazy You and Land of Lincoln. And you have written a great piece for Time Magazine about the extraordinary wealth in Washington, D.C. Right. So why is there so much money in D.C. right now? What's fueling Because this? it's uh, being taken from the rest of the country. Uh, median average income, I think, is 70% higher than the national average. Wow. Um, and it's basically a parasitic economy. It's, it, it sucks up the money from the rest of the country and then puts people to work here. And a lot of the money, at least the people who are benefiting from it, are private contractors. They're, they're government contractors. Right. And it, you explain it as the government just changing clothes. What right. does that mean? Well, basically, because the government, uh, as a political matter, can only grow at s such and such a rate, um, they let it grow uh, and disguise the growth by hiring private contractors. So it often happens now that you'll have contractors who do nothing but get hired by government contracts to help them get government contracts. So huge amounts of taxpayer money are going to these private firms uh, that essentially run the government for the government. So it's, it's, a, it's an odd kind of situation where the outsiders actually know more about how the government works than the insiders do. The, the sort of deceptive thing is people in Washington say, well, you know, the government workforce really hasn't expanded that much, you know, and our budgets are, we're really working under budget constraints. Well, that's simply because they just sort of outsourced everything. The power is still here in Washington. I live in Los Angeles where we're still feeling the recession very much and the ill effects of bad government and big right. deficits. When are we going to see this wealth out west? Uh, oh, well, when we decide to send you some. Uh, what's happened here, there was a recession here in, in, the, in the Washington area, but it was much shallower and the recovery was much quicker than it was in the rest of the country. Uh, for example, here in Arlington where I live, the uh, median house prices took a dip, but now they're back up to their peak where they were in 2007 before the crash. Uh, we get to print money, and we also get to take it from the rest of the country at the point of a gun. What are the ramifications for this kind of a boom? In this sort of new upper class, this uber Washington class, for example, um, environmentalism is extremely important so you go around town and there are wars against the private automobile you see bike share rental racks all over the place and zip cars which are uh, cars you can rent by the hour so you don't actually have to sully your hands by owning an automobile Ew. what that basically means is that you have a sensibility of the regulators of the economy who don't understand the economy. So let's say you're in Pennsylvania, western Pennsylvania, fracking comes along for natural gas. This is the promise of a better life. This is a way of getting out of the hole that the economy is in. Here, it's an abomination. Fracking is a violation of everything that's the, of the environment. Well, where does the fracking actually get regulated? It gets regulated here by people who have no understanding of the kinds of challenges that are being faced by the rest of the country. So there's hypocrisy and disconnect in Washington, D.C.? Oh, D. my C? God, I can't believe it. Stop the presses. Yeah, but, it, you know, as I say, it's there is a serious side to it because I think the, 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 the regulatory state is so ill-equipped to respond to the needs of the rest of the country yes. that the country uh, suffers as a result of this disconnection. And the rest of the country really isn't cheering for Washington, D.C., are they? I haven't noticed any great groundswell of affection uh, for Washington, and that's good. I mean, that's a very good American way to look at things. People should be always skeptical of power and concentrations of power. What's happened, I think, over the last 40 years is that the concentrations of power in Washington have really started to separate the capital from the rest of the country, and that's what's new. Great article in Time Magazine. Thank you very Everyone much. Everyone should read it to see what's going on in D.C. And if only you lived here and made as much money as Come on down. Here. We're happy to have you. For Reason TV, I'm Kennedy. Thank you very much, Andy Ferguson. Thank you for having me.